What's in a challenge? One would think that we should be seeking the most strifeless life with endless leisure. And yet we stride towards challenge, creating them when there is a lack of it. What we seek is not ease, it is purpose. We want proof that we are here and we could not be conquered even by the greatest of trials. So we seek out hardship when we hear tale of it burning others. We rise to greatness when told something is too great for us. We go for... This game sucks. It's not even good. Lamerific. No, it doesn't even get a rating. I've tried Neo before, and I wanted to give it another go. This happens a lot to me. I'll get frustrated with a game and leave it, and then after a while I'll start to think, maybe I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I'll try it again a different way, and see if I can get the same enjoyment I see other people experiencing. This is the gist of what happened last time. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm doing my best, man. It's a lot to take in. It's like three things. Come on. Look, here's a boss to test that you've really got your fundamentals down. Really have my fun- It's the third boss in the game. Yeah, it's the third boss in the game and you're eating it. Wow. Look, I, I, I need some time to practice these things and I'm dying in three what, hits. You can't handle a little hard game? Oh, what's the matter? Do not hit me, dude. Look. There, I've got her key down. I'm get. What? Gotcha. You, you can't throw a gotcha at me and the boss supposed to test my fundamentals. Why not? It, it, it's supposed to test my fundamentals. It's the third boss in the oh, game. little baby isn't good enough. Should go back to Mech Quest. You watch your tone about Mech Quest, you little... Months or maybe years passed. And soon enough, I thought, maybe I wasn't in the right frame of mind. So I looked around to see if anyone else struggled in a similar situation, and I found it. Oh. Why didn't you tell me that? We- I did! You said... Blocking? No thanks. I'm actually good at video games. Oh. Yeah, so I first played Neo shortly after a long fling with Dark Souls 3, and in that game it's very dodge roll focused. There's blocking, but it's almost treated like a joke. Blocking takes a lot of stamina, stuns you if you run out of stamina, keeps you in the same place where you might not want to be, and needs shields above a certain grade to even block all the damage. Dodging was just the more optimal defense costing a fraction of the stamina, having a healthy amount of invincibility, repositioning you, and negating all damage while letting you have more offense. What wound up happening to me, and a lot of other, uh, FromSoft veterans, is that we took the lessons learned from Dark Souls 3 and tried to force it onto other games. I tried it before and failed, because I tried to play it like a different game. So in Neo, the shoe's kind of on the other foot. The iframes are much tighter, so dodging is more about getting out of attacks rather than through them. Blocking blocks all damage, no matter the weapon. And if you're being hit, you can bring up your block much faster than you can dodge. If they're bigger than you, dodge more than you block. Meow! Has a mission-based gameplay loop. Each level will have a boss at the end for its first mission. And they're all unique, even the side mission areas, which is some nice effort. It also has a Diablo-esque loot system. It has a small number of weapons with very intricate movesets that you could put skill points into to expand even further. I kind of like that. All my skill from one weapon transfers to the next of the same type. And I don't have to worry about upgrade investments or finding a weapon with the right moveset. There's a page in your inventory for new items, so if you get something and don't know what it is, you don't have to go searching for it. What's better is, you can sell unused gear for experience, so you can sort of bank experience until you want to spend it. Stats are spread out and a little confusing, but don't worry. 
You can't really go wrong putting points anywhere when starting out. Weapons also scale from multiple stats, some more than others. Once you get a feel for the game, items that refund your levels and skills are available, but spreading around your levels until everything is 20 is a perfectly reasonable way to go, even till the end of the game. There are seven weapon types to master, with different playstyles each. There's... Uh... Um... Look, just pick the ones that call out to you, and you'll be golden. Weapons have no bearing on your weight, just armor, which I like. I wish, you know, those other games did that. Oftentimes, slower weapons have large weights, making you use less armor than lighter weapons to keep up, which feels like it goes against the fantasy. Weapons are usually already balanced around movesets, damage and speed, so weapon weight is like this hidden drawback whenever it's present. Exploration is rewarding. You can find little guys to get a buff at the shrine, and they'll be hidden behind all sorts of things, even inside breakable stuff. Look, there's one now. The compass points you in the right direction, so you know where to go for progress and what's a side area, usually. I almost don't even need to talk about the combat, just look at it. It's quick, it's punchy, every decision is impactful, and you get a bunch of skills to add combos and parries. There's also passive abilities in all skill trees, so check out each one out while focusing on your favorite weapon. There are three stances, each with their own combos. Oh yeah, stances. Neo's flagship mechanics are stances and the key pulse. Low stance is your quick attacks that let you dodge around, but they'll bounce off of blocking enemies. High stance is your heavy stance with slow attacks that stagger enemies and demolish enemy key if they block. But your dash turns into a slower roll. Mid stance is, wouldn't you know it, a middle ground that balances speed and power. Mid stance also often has skills about guarding and parrying. I found myself switching between stances as I needed them, usually high stance for single enemies and mid for dealing with multiple. It's like having access to a huge variety of tools, and your only limit is knowing how to use them, and remembering that you have them. Think of key pulse like a, a Gears of War active reload for your stamina. It's incredibly important, but it can be hard to learn. It can essentially extend your maximum key by 50-ish percent, and doing it right can get rid of these little zones that lower your stamina regeneration. You unlock key pulse on dodge pretty soon, so that helps. Even after playing for a while, I'm still judging my key pulses by looking at the bar rather than the effect around the character. This is a nitpick, but it would be nice to not have my eyes jumping from the center of the screen to the corner and back again. Maybe have another bar in the center. There's an effect around your character, but it can be hard to keep track of. The best techniques I had for the game proper was running away and taking breaks. The best way to not take damage is to go away when a baddie's arm swings down. And if you find yourself in a sticky situation, you can easily find yourself out of it by skedaddling. Also, if you're not having fun, you're not having fun. Take a few minutes to get refreshed, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom. You know what a cool trick is? Smiling at yourself in the mirror increases your self-esteem. It sounds like some gunk from TikTok, but it's true. There's not really a name for it, but the general idea is well understood as using a mirror to build confidence. It involves saying nice things about yourself too, but you can just think it. It might feel weird at first, especially if you are not used to doing it. If you are having trouble, try looking at yourself as if you were looking at a kitten, or a puppy, or your child. And since you come by reflections pretty frequently, it's easy enough to remember and practice. For the positive affirmations, we want them to be inner traits about you, 
but throwing in some compliments about your looks is perfectly fine. Think about qualities you have. If you can't do that, think about your least worst traits. What makes those parts better than the rest? Now, Neo One is known for its uh, extra spicy difficulty, even compared to its peers. Uh, dying quickly just isn't very fun. One mistake and you're done. It's hard to tell what exactly you did wrong, and there's no opportunity to correct it the moment you do it. This is especially felt on slower weapons, where you're more likely to make a mistake. At the very least, the run back is quick, and enemies won't chase forever, so you can just run past them, too. But if the downtime for messing up is so short, why not just let the player take another hit? It can be really rough going at first, but keep your distance, watch, and learn the enemy. And remember, discretion is the better part of valor. So you're going along, you're struggling through the start of the game, trying to remember and use all these mechanics. You're getting got a lot, but you're progressing nonetheless. And then there's Hino Enma. Hino Enma is the worst third boss I've ever come across in a video game. Her attacks are designed around preventing you from dodging, and they're powerful enough to punish blocking. Then she goes into the air for a bit, plus she has paralysis! She smacks your controller out of your hand and there's nothing you can do about it, except just take the extra hit. I don't know who thought this was a good game mechanic. You would think button mashing helps, but no, it doesn't do anything. And she never lets up. It's supposed to be the game teaching you about running away, using your ranged weapons interchangeably, and it's an introduction to status effects. But that's three things the game is trying to impress on you at the same time, without ever saying it clearly. And it's the third boss in the game! I've got other things I'm trying to figure out, lady. You're putting more on my plate. I'm full. This bat broad is just a big barrier to the game as buying it. The learning curve doesn't look like this. It looks like this. I do like that buffs and debuffs are clearly shown with icons pointed up and down to let you know which is which and filling up as it's built up. Oh, look, there's even one for being smelly. Enemies have weak spots often on the head, giving you something to aim for, which is cool. Just remember, you have a weak spot too. There are two different genres of enemies here, humans and yokai. The main difference is their key or stamina. When anyone's key is gone, they're in a critical state where they take more damage, including you. Humans have low key that regenerates quickly. Yokai have high key that regenerates only in those aura puddles, or until they manually recharge it. So if you do get it down, they're exposed for a lot longer. They often can't be staggered until it's down, too. Yokai will also often have a weak spot or exploit to smash their keybar. But don't press your luck too far, they get it back. The bird monsters get a special mention. They have enormous health, stupid damage, absurd key, and they're quick enough where you can only get one or two hits in. So it's just wait for an attack, hit once, over and over again for like three minutes. It's too many strengths and no weakness. Just run past them if you can, like they're soliciting you at the grocery store. There's a spirit guardian system in the game where you collect buddies that give you different bundles of passive buffs and it's up to you to choose which one supports your playstyle. When you die, your friend stays where you die, with its buffs, and your experience, so it's immensely important to get it back. You charge up a super mode where you're invincible. It doesn't last too long, and it shortens even more if you get hit, so it can't get you out of really dire situations. And you can't just steamroll bosses with it. You'll come across some really tough dudes that do a lot of damage, or multiple enemies. This is for them, so you gotta realize when is or isn't a good time to spend it. There's a stat tied to it too, Spirit. 
The more spirit you have, the faster it charges, and it unlocks more passive stat boosts, depending on the friend you have. There are a few really nice tunes in the game. They don't play too often, and not for long, so enjoy them while they last. Most of the time it's mood setters, and early on music gets repeated quite a bit. The story isn't spectacular, it focuses on tracking down an evil wizard. You make friends and follow along one side in a war to unify Japan, but it's not your fight. The game is littered with moments of cool characters doing cool things. Plus, when you get a new spirit from someone, there are animations that play, showcasing that character's history and traits. It's a neat way of doing like a who's who of the era, without text dumps or long monologues. There's still text dumps in the item descriptions if that's what you're into. The main character is a little boring, but he has some qualities. There are times where he shows some tooth and cutscenes. Anzo. Do you seriously follow this pretentious little prick? I do like that it's visually told how he gets more used to the customs and ways of the land. The aforementioned wizard also isn't too great, but at least he chews the scenery. That's it. Kill each other, you samurai fools. <laughs> There's a co-op system that's pretty robust. You can start missions with others or get summoned by those in need of help. Since it's a mission-based game, you can set yourself available for any mission. It's nice, but again, it's an old game. You're not going to find too many people. You'll find the bloody graves of players and some NPCs scattered around. And you can summon a copy of that player to fight and take its stuff. Revenants are a fun little thing you can do whenever you like to get loot and polish your skills. There's a PvP system and clans promoting the activity. Uh, think of it like mobile game PvP. There's an actual PvP system at the gate in the overworld screen, or at least there was. Not too many people playing the game anymore. Side missions often have you going through a level backwards or at a different time of day, which is actually a cool little trick for making content feel fresh. Some may turn their nose up at it, but no, that's efficient. That's more content for me without throwing the devs into the game squasher. You know, how they make games. Pull the wool over my eyes. Tuck me into bed. Some bosses have moves that come out extremely quickly and do gonzo damage. The fourth boss, New, does this. You'll be doing its mechanics well enough and bam, you're dead. There's no tell, there's no surviving. And you know what the move is? It happens when you stay near the boss for too long after taking out its stamina. In this melee game, you're punished for pressing your advantage by getting killed in less than a second. And you're just supposed to figure it out after dying to it several times. There's no possible way to figure it out during the fight, because as soon as it happens, you're dead. It's like the boss opens up the console and types kill all. I wish I could do the same because that's what the fight deserves. It's not fun to instantly die, especially to something you couldn't see coming. It's not prestigious, it feels cheap, and I'm not more of a gamer for overcoming it. The toughest bosses boil down to memorization, or slowly whittling away a health bar with the small punish windows, or both. I feel far more relief than pleasure from killing a boss because, at last, a single mistake doesn't refill its health to full. But maybe that's just a me thing. I'd rather flatten my cock with rock than fight these things. Arr, we'd all rather smash our cocks with rocks. But we only get one, so we have to be careful and do this instead. What? 
I'm not asking to poise through everything mashing R1, but it would be nice if I didn't have to take a certification course for each individual boss before beating them. Elden Ring had this problem too. And besides all that, it's the fourth boss in the game! Right after Hino and Ma! Back to back bosses screaming at you to dumpster your virtual copy of Neo. I've never met a game that didn't want people to play it as much as this. Also, it's not always clear when a boss will show up. Sometimes it's obvious, but other times, all the experience you've been collecting gets wiped out because you're still learning this attack is unblockable 101 in community college. Which feels exceptionally cheap, but admittedly it's easy enough to earn that experience back. A nitpick. Many bosses are weak to circle strafing. This isn't a problem unique to Neo, but still, it feels a bit silly. As you go through the game, you'll get your stride and things will become easier. You start getting one or two shot less, getting more tools to deal with specific situations, more moves, bosses take more damage. It feels more like it's supposed. Wait a second. Did you balance the first zone's mission at the same level as the second's? Hey! Yeah! The rest of the game has way less of the BS plaguing the beginning of it. So p people run into these two-shotting normal enemies and ball-flattening bosses and think, Oh god, the entire game is like this? A a and leave! Huh? What? What's this fraternity initiation crap? What's this, he's not always like this, he's really a nice guy, garbage. The hardest levels in the game are the first impression. Okay, bosses can still two to three shot you, and their attacks can come out way too fast. So it still feels like community college sometimes. And I complain, but they do serve the purpose of shaping you, the player, into the right frame of mind. Though instead of carefully shaping like it's a clay pot. It, it's done with comically oversized hammers. The final boss is a spectacle, but isn't great. There are six other bosses you fight before it, so it's more of a victory lap, I suppose. A few missions unlock after you beat the game, but they're just duo bosses, so ignore them and go to the boat. Neo handles going to New Game Plus in a pretty cool way. The last mission is going through the tutorial dungeon, backwards, of course, until you get back to the cell you started in and reflect on your journey. After that, you can switch what playthrough you're in at any time from the map screen. Since it's a mission-based game, Neo has been made far less strict about how you go through subsequent playthroughs. Multiple areas are available from the start, as well as many side missions. The DLCs also unlock after the final mission, which you can continue your first playthrough with as well. As well as the Abyss, an infinite dungeon with escalating dangers and rewards. Uh, things turn into damage spongers by floor 3, and it sucks. I recommend doing a couple levels of the Abyss and a few missions of playthrough 2 before touching the DLC in first playthrough mode. I know, I know. That sounds really weird, but it has to do when, with when the DLC came out, versus where the player base was at with their characters. It, you can go through the first zone without doing this, and it's challenging enough. And then you get to the first boss, and he cleaves you in twain with a You must be this tall sign. By the way, could you sign my petition for representation of the differently heighted at parks and fairs? New Game Plus has different enemy placements often adding more enemies in one spot, which can spice things up, but depending on the enemies, it can just make things tedious. Plus, you don't really have too many tools to deal with more than one enemy at once, so it's shining a light on one of the game's weak spots. The DLC has a lot of what makes the harder parts of the game not great. Groups of tougher or annoying enemies in one spot Bosses that are really fast and hit really hard. Grabs that come out fast. 
enemies that spawn when you're dealing with other enemies. Everything's a damage sponge. There's so much health, but none for you. Nearly every encounter is solved like so. Realize you're outnumbered. Walk a little back so enemies have to come to you and fight them one-on-one. -on -one. If you can't do that, kite until you get an opening, get killed by the gotcha, and remember that it's there next time. Fighting multiple guys is usually not the strength of these types of games, yet it's what's usually done to increase difficulty. It's fine in moderation, of course, but when it's the main course, I want to eat somewhere else. Eventually, I got to Maria, who exemplifies some of the worst in Neo. Stupid quick, absurd damage, instant grabs, teeny tiny punish window, completely unstaggerable for the latter half of the... but you know the drill by now. After a few good tries, I thought to myself, You know... I think I got everything I wanted out of this game. Maybe it's because I'm playing with an especially slow weapon in the axe, but what the game is offering at this point is getting out of what I consider enjoyable. On the cool scale, Neo bounces back and forth between sick and eh, averaging a soke. You know, I'm glad I gave Neo another shot. I've learned that sometimes your learned way of doing things can get in the way of experiencing new things. It looks like you weren't so bad after all. <laughs>